Hello everyone and welcome to the third episode of series four of Copper and Natter, a Pro League special with my very special guest this evening, GB and Scotland legend, Sarah Robertson. Sas, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me on. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Okay, so you might remember that last week, Sarah Jones and Leah Wilkinson actually voted Saz as one of the funniest in the GB women's side. So I'm hoping that Saz will live up to expectations. I know she will. I think this is going to be a cracking episode. But yeah, GB and Scotland legend, one of Scotland's finest hockey players right now and in recent times, having made your Scotland debut aged just 18. Is that correct? Yeah, 2012. So yeah, yeah, it would have been just 18. Yeah. Yeah, Long pretty impressive. Now. Pretty impressive. And then your GB debut a few years later, having recently scored um, on your 50th GB appearance. The girl is in fine form going into a busy summer. I'm excited to get going. Are you good to go? Well, what a build up. I've got a lot yeah. to live up to. I have no doubt that you will uh, uphold this reputation. But yeah, to start things off, as I do with every cup and natter, I found out the most important thing about my guests, and that is how you like your tea. Now, I'm quite excited about this because if I'm thinking of the GB women's side and the tea drinkers, you are right up there, okay? So I'm going to do this by asking you five quick fire questions, if that's all right. Yeah. Okay. Number one, breakfast tea or herbal tea? Breakfast, all day long. Okay. Twinings, Yorkshire or Earl Grey? It's Yorkshire for me. Yeah. Okay. Sugar, milk or neither? Just milk. Yeah. Okay. Sweet enough, you know. Okay. <laughs> Question number four, very important one. Digestive, hobnob or a chocolate chip cookie? That's tricky. Yeah. You'd have yeah. all of them. I'd, I'd, I'd ideally have all, but <laughs> in the lead up to the summer, maybe I should just pick one. Um, yeah. Maybe a hobnob. Okay. Strong, strong, strong. Okay. Last one. Does tea taste better when made by yourself or made by someone else? To be honest, I'm quite particular how I like it. <laughs> so I prefer to make my own cup of tea. But okay. unless someone else knows how to do it, then I'll happily receive. Okay, that's a mental note for myself and any others. <laughs> don't risk it. Let's just leave Saz to it. And I think it'd be rude if I don't uh, mention right now. Let me see your mug. Oh. Here we go. Got a nice. Rubble Finest dab mug. Um, I wouldn't expect anything less. Gave me that for my birthday one year and yeah, dab every time you take a take a drink out of that. Mm. It's a nice touch. Okay, you, I'll hold you to that for the next 30 minutes. Every time I see you have a little swig of your tea, you're going to dab, all right? She's ready for it. Okay. I can't um, believe I've done that on, on this show. Yeah. A couple of Natter exclusive. I, I know you take this seriously and I appreciate you opening up to the viewers already. But um, yeah, very interesting, as I said, a key tea, tea drinker. So I'm in good company right now. But moving on, I've pre-warned you that I ask all of my couple and Natter guests three questions. OK, so to start things off, I'd like to talk about more of your childhood and upbringing. So I'm obviously aware that you were sports mad, played a lot of different sports um, growing up and two in particular being hockey and football. Now, if you were to take yourself back uh, to when you kind of specialised and focused primarily on hockey, what made you make that decision um, at the time? Yeah, yeah, good question. I think, yeah, I played both in Scotland growing up. Um, I only picked up hockey when I went to high school, um, so I'd only... Football had always been my first love as a sport. I absolutely loved it. I was always playing football in the garden. So I would have been Bookie's favourite to only pick football. Mm. Um, but yeah, played both for Scotland growing up. Um, yeah, and kind of just had a whirlwind journey with hockey. Kind of got chucked in straight at the deep end. Like even after only playing for two years, I went away with Scotland under 16 and just had such a great time and met a lot of like-minded girls who are still some of my closest friends today. So yeah, I remember when I was about 16, I had to make the decision um, and I distinctly remember the Commonwealth Games getting floated. At, at that time, that would have been probably three or four years before Glasgow, obviously oh, a home yeah. Commonwealth Games. I remember people talking about that and saying that I could be in the mix for that. And I just, the opportunity there for hockey was way greater than football at that time. Obviously, 
hockey, everyone always playing, you know, even if you're the youngest member of the team, getting rotations, whereas football, mm. at that stage, I was starting to become a bit of a bench player and kind of getting 10, 15 minutes towards the end. Um, so I just remember the opportunities within hockey being immense and I had such good friends in the team and it linked up nicely with potentially going on to study at Edinburgh Uni. So it all kind of just fell into place. Mm. Uh, obviously, absolutely delighted that you did make that decision uh, back in the day. But also, you know, football and hockey are quite similar in terms of both being team sports. Admittedly, slight like difference in terms of rules and the offside rule maybe not necessarily being a big thing uh, as as in um, hockey as it is in, in football but do you see that there was the similarities between the two sports that kind of made you a natural fit for hockey say from the your, the football background? Yeah 100% and um, mm. I remember when I got picked for Scotland under 16s hockey for the first time as I said I'd only been playing hockey for a couple of years and they literally told me in the selection meeting we're picking you as a wild card because we, we can see what you're trying to do, but you just don't have the skills to do it. And that was just so accurate. Yeah. Like I, I had the vision, I knew where I wanted to pass it. I knew what skills I wanted to do. I just hadn't played for long enough to pick up the hands. Um, so they sort of invested in me and saw that I had potential, but massively, I'd say like a lot of my hockey, even nowadays is, you know, been able to see passes and the movement. Mm. And I think that's, massively ingrained in me from playing football mm. I think the game intelligence 100% is one of your greatest skills and actually what a wild card Scotland played right then back then they're probably uh you know <laughs> playing on that still however many years later right they're pro that's probably yeah, no, yeah. The same. <laughs> yeah it's funny I actually bumped into what my Scotland under 16 coach and we went to play pro league in Australia and he was at the side of the pitch and oh I think he kind of gave me this look thinking it's paid off. <laughs> oh, isn't it? That's it. Yeah. He saw it. He saw it. It's really interesting. But yeah, I guess the, the, the similarities between the two, obviously, as I said, we're delighted that you made that decision. It must have been a hard one back then. But also kind of managing commitments and dual aspirations has always been a big thing for you. And I, I look at yourself and you're quite a rounded individual both on and off the pitch and you know for those that are unaware you obviously uh, joined the centralized program last cycle before Rio but you also did that alongside a law degree so how easy was that kind of managing those commitments as well along the way? Yeah you're right I think yeah my whole whole career I've spent studying alongside it as well I think that came from a place of you know I grew up in the Scotland system it wasn't really on my radar to ever be a professional hockey player. It was on my radar to play for Scotland, but we we were lucky to go full time lead up to Glasgow. But it was never sort of in my head as being a profession. Mm -hmm. So it was always sort of on the cards to go to uni, get a degree, and yeah, I was always pretty driven at school and at uni as well. Um, so yeah, I've had the two hand in hand for like the last ten years now, um, as I've done my degree and then some professional qualifications since. I think to be honest, for me, I think the two go quite hand in hand in terms of. For me, it's so healthy to have something outside of hockey to mm. switch my mind off. And obviously, being a professional athlete, you lead a certain lifestyle. So studying actually goes quite well with that. You know, you've got a lot of extra time, but time that's not really for going out partying. It's for doing something else. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, as much as I would like to party <laughs> in my spare time. And you, I you worded that. You worded that absolutely perfectly. I'll give you that. <laughs> But yeah, I think having something like productive that is yeah. um, is not as wild an influence as partying alongside. I think, um, yeah, the two have gone so hand in hand for me over the last 10 years. It's been great. Mm, I think that's something um, I discussed in detail in the third series of Couple Natter when uh, Georgie Twig joined me, uh, obviously working now at Bird and Bird. But she followed a very similar path to yourself in, you know, having the hockey alongside the law um, you know, throughout her career and obviously work wonders for her and it's obviously doing its job for you. But um, yeah, moving on to the second question I planned, you um, spoke about it briefly actually already about, um, you know, playing on home soil. So you're a huge proud Scot, okay? You're, 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 you're really proud of where you come from. You never forget your roots, even though you're back down south, um, so far away from home. You've played nearly 150 times for both Scotland and GB at the age of 27, which is absolutely remarkable. And 
if you look back at your international career, you've obviously had the opportunity to play in plenty of major tournaments. But I've picked out two here and uh, I want to talk about the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow and also the 2019 European B Division also in Glasgow. Now, you know, as I said, as a proud Scot, how, how important is it for you to have those opportunities to, you know, play in front of a home crowd on home soil? Yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, two two great tournaments um, for playing for Scotland. Um, both very different. When I went to Glasgow, as you said, I was one of the young ones. Um, I was only 21 at the time and it was my first sort of Commonwealth game was on my radar. I just remember being like completely blown away by the whole thing. Um, we had quite a senior experienced Scotland team at the time, um, like so many people that I looked up to in that team. And I was sort of one of the young ones that made like quite a late bid to get in. And I just remember the whole sort of two weeks just being an amazing experience. And then compare that to 2019 Euros for Scotland, I would have been one of the older, most senior players yeah. in that team returning from GB. So with a little bit of pressure on that side of it as well. And obviously Scotland were keen to get promoted to go back up. So a completely different experience, but to be honest, the 2019 Euros were absolutely epic as well. Uh, a lot of my friends were in the team, people that I'd come up with through the juniors. And we just had this absolutely amazing week where we just, we just kept winning. It was just like yeah. addictive. And obviously you only have to come top two to win it. Um, but I remember going into the last day being like, well, we've come this far, like, let's go for it. And we won that gold on the last day. And it was, yeah, <laughs> Scotland, when they win, they win, we go absolutely mental. <laughs> so we had um, <laughs> had, a, had a crazy night after that. But it was, uh, yeah, some great times at Glasgow Green. So I should think so as well. I think, um, you know, I've played um, in Glasgow quite a few times as well. And I think it's a really special you know, stadium to play in. And and for you, like thinking back to those two tournaments, considering they're quite contrasting experience mm -hmm. in terms of timing of your international career and, you know, the opposition and, and stuff like that. But if you're looking back, how much do you think that, you know, the, the crowd, the home crowd, the Scottish crowd, um, mm -hmm. being as loud and patriotic as ever, how much did that help you and kind of be that 12th man that we all talk about? Yeah, 100%. I it's something when you're playing you try not to focus on too much but yeah. I think throughout the tournament like definitely my mum and dad were there at both tournaments Um, we had Nicola Sturgeon at the Euros in 2019 and like you had a real sense of like the country was behind you and I know mm -hmm. hockey's only a small sport but we had the stands filled for both tournaments Um, as you say the Scottish people are very proud so you're looking up seeing Scottish flags hearing bagpipes it's yeah special times. Oh it's incredible I mean Again, keeping on, I guess, the, the, the Scotland chat right now. Um, so in the, in the current GB side, I spoke about this with Sarah Jones and Leah Wilkinson last week. Obviously, just those two are from Wales. And then from Scotland, we've got yourself, Charlotte Watson, Amy Costello, and obviously Nikki Cochran was in at the start of the cycle as well. So there's four Scottish um, representatives in the current squad. Also, I must admit, I think it's really powerful and important to have the home nations represented within our GB side. But what do you think are the aspirations moving forwards to try and, you know, raise that number for the Scots and the Welsh moving forwards? Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think that's so important that GB is a true representation of all the talent across the whole of GB. Um, I think, to be honest, since the time I've been on the programme, there's already been massive change. Um, in the lead up to Rio 2016, I think there was only one tournament as GB before the Olympics. So the majority of the time England were playing as England, mm -hmm. we were sort of the extra sort of three Scots that were at the training. And then, you know, as ridiculous as sometimes in the lead up to Europeans, we would be like leaving meetings so they could have England tactics. Yeah. Whereas I think this cycle, a massive switch has been the fact that we play as GB in the Pro League. So cool. 90, 95% of our time feels like it's spent as GB and then it feels more abnormal to then go to the home nations. So I think that change has been massive. Like, you know, you're playing a, like 30, 40 games for GB in the lead up to Olympics as opposed to having one tournament. Sure. Um, so yeah, I think that's made a massive difference. And I think the EDP has been huge. Like, I think we've got young players in now like Amy and Charlotte Watson that have like come through that so I think it just you just hope it keeps going in that way like you know you keep hoping that people get 
they see the top as being equal and then they see it as a realistic step and then they get opportunities within EDP. So yeah, I think massive progress and I just hope it keeps going in that direction. Yeah, uh, I'd like to echo that. I think that's amazingly put actually. And and for, for yourself, you know, I've said it at the start of this, this episode, but I see you as the kingpin in Scotland hockey right now. And actually for, for young players in Scotland to have, you know, all four of you as involved in the GB women's side right now, but also as fantastic role models as you are, I think it's really important and it's really powerful. And uh, yeah, as you said, I think it's really important to have that, you know, clear representation within our GB side. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll have many people that you've inspired in years to come. Um, but speaking of GB and obviously looking ahead to the next few weeks and the Pro League matches that are upon us, um, I must emphasise at this time that at time of recording, GB men and women are playing uh, Germany in some rearranged matches from November 2020 this week. Um, obviously, GB versus Germany, always a thrilling encounter. Saz, what are you expecting from the Germans? Oh, I don't know. It's a bit of an un un unknown, to be honest. Mm. Um, I think it'll definitely be a step up for us. I think, obviously, over the last year, we've struggled to get a lot of international travel. And I think everyone's kind of been preparing in stealth mode. So that's why I kind of say that it's a bit of an unknown package yeah. because no one's really been playing that much. You don't know what other countries have been up to. Um, but I think we're in a good place as a team. And I think Germany will bring, bring a good squad here. Um, especially as a, in the lead up to the Europeans. So I think it will be two, two really competitive games, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, looking back on the um, the fixtures from last season, mm -hmm. which were actually in 2019, um, in April 2019 away, we actually lost 2-0. I remember the game because it was absolutely chucking it down. I don't know whether you remember it. It was yeah. disgusting weather from start to finish. And then in June 2019, we narrowly lost 4-3. So they're always going to be close encounters. Are you hopeful going into the next uh, few days? Yeah, definitely. I think we, we played Ireland last week in six games and I think won five of them and drew one. So I feel like the squad is in a good place. We've got good momentum um, and we've got yeah, a week, week or so's training before these games. So yeah, I would, I'd like to, like to back us next week, two games, two wins. I 100% back us. I mean, especially with this girl popping the goals in left, right and centre for everyone. I'll let you into a secret. She's on fire right now. So, yeah, yeah. fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we're talking a good game right now. I'm sure we're going to uh, be absolutely fine. But, yeah, yeah. interesting interesting to hear uh, what you've said. But I hope you don't mind. I feel like we've got enough time for one final round. I can't say I've told you about this. So you're just going to have to deal with it. But it's called finish the sentence. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So very simple. I'm going to read out sentence. You're going to finish it for me. We'll see how we get on. Lovely. Love it. Okay. Okay. Number one. If I wasn't a hockey player, I would be. Am I answering it for myself? Yes. Yeah. Um, a lawyer. Okay obviously using your degree to good use okay if i could eat one thing for the rest of my life it would be cereal can you specify um if there was no re repercussions maybe <laughs> some sweet sugary cereal <laughs> So if Emma G was if Emma G was listening, Emma G is our um, nutritionist. Emma Garth. Yeah, then, then my amazing. answer is Weetabix. Yeah, nah. Okay, Weetabix <laughs> compared to what? Are we talking sugar puffs, cocoa pots? Not as extreme. I think I'd get sick of that. But just like a slightly sugary muesli. I just Ooh, okay. can't get enough cereal, yeah. All right, okay, cereal is. Um, number three, if I could play in any other p position on the pitch, it would be? Midfield. Okay, so close enough up top to still be able to pop the goals in. Yeah, exactly. Okay, fair. Um, if I, <laughs> this is a good one. If I could play for any other club side in the English Premier League, it would be? Oh, um... Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nearly spat my tea out. Go on. 
Mm, you know what? I'd maybe pick someone like Birmingham Uni so I could just go back to uni and have a, <laughs> have a uni social life again. <laughs> oh, she loves it. You can't take the girl out of uni, I'll tell you that. To be fair, good suggestion. I mm. uh big fan, obviously, had some yeah, fantastic had, years. Had some good nights out with the Birmingham Uni girls, so yeah. <laughs> but I don't, know, I don't know if the next generation are as good as you lot. They had a tough act to follow. Um, yes. we, we would only find out. I mean, yeah, if Phil Goodrum or whoever's involved in Birmingham want to uh, drop her a message, sign her up. Um, okay, fair enough. Last one. If I could swap bodies with any other sports person, it would be? Bodies? Yeah. So, like, think Freaky Friday, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Maybe someone like KJT, you know, I feel like she's just, I feel like heptathletes are just the ultimate rounded athlete. Mm. She's, a bit, she's a bit of a legend in our field as well, isn't she? Yeah, so I'd maybe go for something not too ambitious like that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I could imagine you doing the full shebang, the high jump, the 800 metres, the old shot put. You've got all of that in the bank. Yeah, I feel like they're definitely having different events. That would be the that would be the one. Okay, interesting. All right, fair enough. Very good. I feel like you uh smashed that round again. I re reiterate, Birmingham Uni, get on that <laughs> straight away. Um, but no, Saz. In all seriousness, thirty minutes is nearly up. My mug of tea is very nearly empty. I must admit, I'm a little bit disappointed in the lack of dabbing. <laughs> I did it once, and then I thought, okay, I can't keep doing that. I've I'm going to just absolutely ruin my social cred on this yeah. show. The street cred has gone from about the second minute. But, um, yeah, thank you so, so much for joining me now. I've really, really enjoyed it. God, time, time flies on this show, doesn't it? Just amazing what you can cover in half an hour and one cup of tea. Oh, uh, you know what? That's the whole part of it, isn't it? However many episodes later. But, no, thank you so, so much. Um, for anyone wanting to watch any of the Pro League matches, over the next few weeks. They will all be televised on BT Sport. You can also um, catch up with the matches on the Match Centre, on the GB Hockey website, or on the social media channels at GB Hockey. Now, a big announcement that because of this week's schedule, it's tomorrow that will be the next episode. So that means the guest reveal will be at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, but in the meantime, keep that kettle boiled, keep nattering using hashtag Cupper and Natter, and I'll see you again, same time, same place tomorrow. Thank you so much, Saz. Thanks so much for having me. What an absolute treat. Cheers, Em. Ciao, ciao.